think I nailed that. I think you did. All right. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Anderson. I'm Phil. And we are going to break down the track of Madeline. So, let's just jump in here. Um, so, we've got a bunch of drums, a bunch of percussion, a bunch of bass. A bunch of keyboards. A bunch of keyboards. Uh, so, yeah, let's just take a look at what's going on here. So, we've got these kind of live sounding drums happening. We'll just take this intro. All right, pretty simple. Having a little more motion. All this is layered on top of each other. And that is where our hi-hat's living. It's basically like the main loop of the song. So yeah, all that's happening pretty much throughout, um, except for there's a little bit cut out for the verses just to give a little more space. Um, and then we ran all those through old Spectrasonics console, uh, just to give it a little more life. And then we get into this lovely programming, um, you know, that just the claps are going to add something with the snare drum. Whoops. Hooray. This is in the verses, yeah. This is in the verses in the pre-chorus. And, uh... So yeah, a bunch of stuff's happening there. So when the chorus kicks in, it starts to get a little more interesting. We have this synthetic kick, kind of 8080 vibe. That I can't really tell. And there's that snare drum. And I believe at this point, this is where we sent everything off to mix. So this is the last it kind of saw. Um, saw us and I believe since then we tailored a little more of that kind of uh, synthetic drum throughout the whole track um, then we added this ride symbol because why not live on the edge indeed and then There's a hi-hat just a hi-hat an open hat, hat. And then this is the fill that kind of happens throughout the song. That. And I believe there's some some flanging happening on it. If it'll ever get to it. Yeah, we got a little drum shaper. RC20. Yes, sir. And so once all that's together, you get a little, a little something of that nature. Just layering everything, giving us a little juice. Yep, especially in those choruses. Um, yeah. That's pretty. That's the drums. That's the drums for the whole song. Pretty simple drums happening. You know, it may not look super simple, but it once you start realizing where everything goes, it all fits into a nice little thing. This was my favorite part of the whole track. Is during the outro, kind of the out chorus. Throughout the outro, you have all this percussion. Um, we did a little volume automation, bring it up. All your time just to find some. Super fun hearing that with all the drums. I mean, who doesn't who doesn't like that? So yeah, moving on. We've got some, when we wrote the song, Trent kind of had a little, um, Trent Dabbs, the great and powerful Trent Dabbs, um, kind of had a, a framework with this. He had this bass already there that I'm like, why is there two bass tracks? And then we just kind of left them. We did, you know, this main one. This one has kind of that dirty grit to it. Just enhance it. So again, we're just listening to everything up to this point. We're just having a good time. Groove, man. Groove. So, yeah, we have these 
wonderful flute parts that Phil played here, I believe. I believe that was Mellotron, right? I don't know. No idea. <laughs> this song it went, sounds like a Mellotron. So it I went through quite it. a bit of uh, back and forth of us trying to really figure out what the, the actual intention of the song was. Uh, did you print that through a Space Echo or something? I believe this, I ran this through my Benson Tallbird. Mm. And uh, shout out to shout the great Benson. folks at Benson. <laughs> Give it some life. And these were another part, the, the brass and strings mm -hmm. was something Trent already had inside there. Just kind of, they're really cool that they don't really, I, I don't want to say they don't do much, but I think they do, they do a thing that's not necessarily like a, like a horn or a string right. thing. They, they kind of go together. You don't really realize that it's a horn or it's a string. Or but the melody is super key. To the hook, really. And it kind of just enforces the melody a little more. Mm -hmm. So hearing everything with those happening. <laughs> Nothing's getting in the way. Just treating those just pretty much like a, a simple sample. Sample, yeah. And this was super, uh, I think, I don't remember what this is. Synth. Again, and it, this is the only time that happens. I, that, I lied to you. That's in pre-chorus. Yep. Pre-choruses. Pre yep. This so we hear, we hear all that. So fun. That makes me want to, I, I want to just skip down a little bit further to this Juno part. Juno part. So this was something we were working over at Southern Ground across the street, and uh, Jamie Liddell was with us. Shout out to Jamie. Shout out Jamie. Um, and we, he was like, "I oh, just try this," in his you know beautiful British accent. And I was like, "That's the hippest thing." But let's take a look at what's actually going on in this thing. It was a, yeah, Juno patch. Juno 106, I think. So that's it. And, like, you can you can tell what it should be, but it's like, uh, it's not quite this thing. So we take the pretty much everything except that medium band. Gives it a real vowel sound. A little tremolator. That just reinforces it making that rhythm really push you. Super nice. The good people at uh, Good Hertz with the uh, Fulf compressor. It's a little, you can hear the EQ difference sway. Got a little wow on it. And this thing, I always usually hate these kind of plugins to where it's like everything in one. It feels like cheating in some sure. way. But the fucking thing works. super hip. It it's, works. It's super hip. Um, so yeah, this and this end. I mean, you just, just hate it when it works, but it works. It works. It just sounds good. And then we got Pan Man giving us a little stereo information to make it a little more exciting. Add a little grit. Yep. Just a little. And then that that delay just to. Kind of has a little depth. Really. Yeah, yeah, totally adds some. Outside the speaker a bit. So again, listen to that with everything. And I feel like it just keeps reinforcing the groove. Yep, exactly. Really good. Powerful Philip Towns. Um, Do it again. Yeah, so we've got these sitars. I believe the Mellotrons is again. Oh. It sounds pitched down. I wonder if the other one. I believe it's probably an octave lower. Yeah. Yep. 
So they're both happening. Nice. And so that kind of theme occurs um, kind of in random spots, I believe. Listen to the pre-chorus. Yeah. Nothing getting in the way about it. Again, just reinforcing that melody. And then, what do we have here? Time to one of my favorite parts. So fun. Hard cut. Yep. And it's right in your face to where everything else, you know, especially playing off that. It definitely adds a, a, a layer of, uh, of depth. You yeah. really have a sense of place with it. Um, and then this bad mother. Oh, yeah. And see, I think this is super, this totally reminded me of uh, Wonderful Christmas Time. Mm, yeah, that uh, synth, kind of strange synth. And this was, uh, uh, I think, a Native Instruments was it? P uh, patch. And I think it was... Maybe in their spark plug in, maybe something like right. that. You can see, it's kind of weak there again, taking all the lows and the highs kind of out. Compression. The AE compressor, nice. hey, I'd like the name. <laughs> and this is probably my favorite 1176 that Universal makes, yeah, mainly because they have the two to one ratio here. And it's just it's super smooth, mm -hmm. you know. With this, you can tell we're we're we got a medium attack, pretty fast release. I really like the fast release on this because the synth just comes back really quick on this. It's, it just loose enough attack to where it lets it come through, but it releases really quick. Adds something cool to it. And so this is so LFO tools kind of it's it's reinforcing the compressor. Right, in shaping that. the envelope. So, again, you're taking, what do we say here? It's like every quarter note-ish, half note? Right, quarter. So, at the, whenever it hits, it's basically going to kind of scoop the attack of that note and then let it open up at the back end. Yeah, so the transient never feels aggressive, but you get the impact of, of just the sonic of it, the, the root note. Also stays out of the way of all the other drum transients. Totally. Yeah. And same here. So we're using Drum Shaper. I love this plugin, and it's not ever... I, I, this isn't what I guess they probably intended to use for it. But as you can see, it's taking that, you know, slamming the attack down, juicing up the sustain, so you get more of that extended note without having anything get in the way of the drums. So let's just take a listen to what's going on. You know, and this as well, you know, we've got the verb happening. Mm -hmm. um, it's definitely a verb. So that's just it. Great. Valhalla, always a win. Yep. A little, this, you know, a good little trick. Just get rid of the information that you don't need. Exactly. Who needs that much low end in any reverb? Right. Nobody. And if you do, then, you know, may God help you. So we got some reverb happening. Here's some delay. Yep. So fun. Also another layer, layer depth, too. So the delay is filtered. It's doing this. Is it ping pong? Mm. It's not ping pong. But it's got a cool. But it does sound image. like it. It does. It's got a cool stereo image, and then the verb has another layer that pushes it back, and the delay is dry, so it's kind of got this. And same thing with that EQ. Just yep. get rid of that information Filter. if you don't particular. If you're not really going for it, you're just going to cloud up any other kind of bottom end or top end information that yep. is actually relevant. Even more filtering on the echo one here. that taking the top end low end. Yeah, Echo Boy, one of the greatest ever. Panning. Oh, okay, that's, that's why that's, we're getting the ping pong. Yep. So the exactly. delay's getting moved around. Yep. Fun. So yeah, and then we got we got these 
two guitar tracks. Um, you know, just kind of, this is, again, that was, Trent, Trent had that. Piece. Yeah. You know, probably this outro, we can get a little more what's going on. It sounds on. like it's got like some wow on it or some RC20 something on it or something. And then, and then this was my guitar on that. And going to, to things that I shouldn't like, but I do like. <laughs> this is Fractal. Yeah. The Axe Effect 3 Fractal. I don't, you know, I like analog gear. I like the amps and guitars. I like the real thing. And I resisted and resisted this thing. But, uh, man, it just sounds so good. It's amazing. And the, and the cat that made it, this, and I remember this specific setting. We modeled some of the amps from downstairs. And this was one that was taken. We modeled the room. We modeled the amp. So, in a uh, synthetic way, this is as real as it gets. Right. If, if, if that makes any sense. What is it? Does it have reverb on it? That track? I want to hear it. It doesn't. It's just. I think it, the reverb's printed. It's, it's coming off of the Axe Effect. Yeah. And again, just a little compression just to sit it back. Barely touching it. And getting a lot of gain from that. Yeah, I love sounds, that plugin. The radio, plug it's so fun. You can um, just it, it just adds some just it says it right more here. Heat. Adds some exactly. heat to it. Yeah, it's just emulating basically old uh, front end amp. preamp. Yeah, preamp. Yeah, it has a lot of warmth. And then then we're down to vocals, which I absolutely despise <laughs> listening to. His vocals aren't great. About had enough. So yeah, you can hear that. And we it printed these to tape afterwards, but I think the vocal chain was that Upton two fifty one. Upton two fifty one. Running uh, through Cappy five sixty. And did we do any compared? And then probably the CL one B or something. That or eleven seventy six. One of those two. Yeah. And then yeah, after that, ran it through tape just to give it that that saturation that you hear just enough mm, every day. Really like every night. Here's the slap. My favorite high Straight from that same tape my machine. State of mind, my mind. And then so for a few choice words and some parts in the chorus, we have uh, one of these Benson uh, Echo devices. My Madeline, hold you tight just to find some shelter. And then you, you figure if you're going to go down the Benson world, might as well go down an Echoplex world as well. So, my Madeline, so. hold you tight just to find some shelter. Sounds like it's going to oh. too. And then, and my Madeline, and you'll never guess. Just D verb. Plain old D verb. Factory D verb. No need to get crazy, children. And then in the track, you know, it adds some all that echo and weird shit just makes it. My Madeline, hold you tight just to find some shelter. Right? And so, you know, once it gets to uh, Tom Elmhurst to mix this thing, he's got some creative options to play with here. And then, so we've got this strange vocal called Robot. In the bridge here, let's take a gander at what's happening. You make the Hi, apologies. You make the I didn't even know that was in there. What is that going through? Is so that, I believe, um, so we've got, we'll just take everything off of here for a moment. You make the best of my situation. Mm. And again, I believe that's just the lead vocal. Just the lead vocal. DS in it coming in. Getting rid of some sedulance. Vocal synth. Yeah, isotope vocal know. synth. Um, I honestly haven't found a tremendous amount of use for this thing, mainly because I'm Same. just not smart enough, I would assume. It's an interesting plug-in. It, it, I've used it before. It doesn't really do the full vocoder thing, but it gives you some weird textures, like exact. It does this. This thing. one. You make the best of my situation. No compromise. It reminds me of motorcycles. 
So you're adding that layer of harmony on top of it. Doing a little EQ and a little, hey, RC20. RC20, can't go wrong. Adding some of that wobble. I love this air plugin that comes stock with Pro Tools. Just to, it does some comb filtering to throw it just way, way outside of the stereo field. Really like it. And then a little filter free. Nice. So hearing that low end extend to the bottom and the top end extend to the top. And whether or not it's really adding that much, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. <laughs> it's cool. It's all about the journey. Indeed. Speaking of some more background vocals. My friend Trent, who we Powerful wrote the song Trent with. Dabs. Always coming through with the background vocals. And this was from the writing the day we wrote it, I believe. I'm pretty sure, yeah. And uh, yeah, you get to, we'll get to hear old Trent. You make the best of my situation compromise. And it's like it's not like if you were going into like a vocal session to like get the backgrounds right, I don't think I would have ever landed on this and be like, yeah, let's do that. But I, I love it. They're slightly <clears throat> behind your main vocal, but it's got a really cool you know kind of swung effect you make the best of my situation compromise it almost adds to the rhythm of of the actual line and like you have a straight and then you have a swung and it makes this really cool juxtaposition and then we have these backgrounds as well. you make the best of my situation no compromise those are my little adds to it and i believe we've commit i think we probably ran these you do tape again, but you make the best of my situation. No, my no second guessing. I make my and I had to di I had to automate that little word there because I sang the wrong word. You make the best of my situation. No compromise. Yeah, so that's happening. That's fun. That's great. And then last but not least, we had, again, the song went through so many different iterations and variations, and we had uh, the wonderful Miss Kristen Rogers come put backgrounds for the whole song, um, and then kind of at the finish line, they're like, I don't really know if we I cut a lot that. of stuff out yeah. that, that we're not showing you here. I've been, um, but yeah, but we used her, her vocal to triggered these vocoders just for this kind of out bit we have three stacks of them you hear that one just on the left hand side um, this should be just the middle sorry I'll get you a little closer different harmony do you remember and then also we've got this one on the right. So hearing them all three together gets you this really nice... Stereo spread. Yeah, and you get the... I don't know, it's like... I, I look at vocoders as all that frequency band, and, and mm -hmm. it's like this is... It just feels really satisfying. Yeah. They're all different... Yeah, they're different frequency bands, and I think I played them slightly different too. That's what to I was going to harmonies. Yeah, so we use the 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 new Behringer. No, we use the the soft tube. This is one we did in here. Oh, we use right. the um, soft UAD tube, soft UAD tube. soft tube, and we use Kristen's vocal as the trigger, and then I just played the actual chord. So I think I kind of voiced them kind of separately too. So you just get different tonalities out of each of them, different harmonies. So yeah, I mean, we'll t we'll give you a little gander of those in the whole track. <laughs> really tell that it's that it's not human but it just adds a little cool texture against all the other vocals in there yeah i mean we could keep diving in and and uh, what's each thing's actually occurring but i think uh for the most part 
yeah this That's is this is pretty much it once you start to look at it you're going huh it's not that much yeah you got drums you got bass you got keys you got vocals it's a band you know and this this is definitely different than than we've ever made a uh, record before you know being that we're pretty much in a closet and we're confined to our little social bubble over the past little bit of a year this it was a different way for me at least of uh making a record so thanks for uh checking out this thing if you got any questions let us know and uh we hope to see you in another one cheers bye